as the Allies liberated many of the concentration camps that fell within Nazi-occupied territory, they found the true horror of the Third Reich. At camps such as Bergen-Belsen, thousands had been left to fend for themselves with no food, little water and corpses and disease were surrounding them. The largest concentration camp was Auschwitz, and it's estimated that over a million died within the barbed wire fences. It was divided into three main camps, Auschwitz I, the main slave labour element, Auschwitz II Birkenau, the extermination centre, and Auschwitz III Monowitz, the IG farm and factory. Escaping from Auschwitz was virtually impossible, but there was one woman who managed to escape the horrific camp, but was later recaptured and was executed in horrific fashion. Maler Zimmetbaum's death was incredibly brutal, but some elements to it are still debated. She was an incredible woman whose story deserves to be told. So join us today as we look at the horrific execution of Mala Zimmetbaum. And remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Mala Zimmetbaum was born in Poland in 1918 into a large family, being the youngest child. Her family moved to Belgium when she was 10, and it was noted she was rather intelligent, being skilled in maths and foreign languages. Her father lost his eyesight becoming blind, and with the family needing money, Mala left school and worked in a diamond factory to support them. But as the Second World War emerged in 1939, after the Nazi invasion of Poland, it looked more likely that Hitler would turn his attention to Belgium. Mala was of Polish Jewish descent, so when Hitler turned his attention to Belgium, life was very dangerous for her. The Nazis in Belgium took part in a number of pogroms, especially in Antwerp, deporting Jews and rounding them up to be sent to the concentration camps. Maller was caught up in these raids and was seized by the Nazis around the 11th of September 1942 and she was then sent to Mechelen Transit Camp. Jews were forced to report here and those who did not were rounded up by the police. Over 25,000 Jews would find themselves transported from Belgium after being sent to Mechelen, ending up in camps such as Bergen-Belsen and in particular Auschwitz. Following a short three-day stay at Mechelen, she was placed on board a train, Transport 10, which took her to Auschwitz. Upon arriving at the camp, she was forced to undergo selection, and was chosen to enter the camp, avoiding being sent straight to the gas chambers. Mala was registered as prisoner number 19,880. She was held inside of Birkenau for around two years, and had an advantage for survival over other prisoners. She spoke many different languages and worked as an interpreter, but she wished to help other inmates. She tried to arrange some inmates to get easier work, and she would also warn patients in the camp's hospital about upcoming selections. This meant that many would rally from their beds and force themselves out, meaning their lives would be saved as the infirmary was often liquidated. She also helped to smuggle food and medication to those who needed it, and it was seen that she was a ray of sunshine in the depths of hell that was Auschwitz. Many of the guards even had respect for her. Whilst at Auschwitz, she fell in love with a male inmate, Edward Galinsky, and together they planned to escape the camp. They worked on a plan which would see one of Edward's friends escaping with them. The plan fell through when a pair of SS guards' uniform trousers were lost as a disguise. They planned to dress as SS guards and sneak out, however Galinsky told his friend he and Zimmerbaum would try and escape. Maller wished to get out of Auschwitz, as she wanted to tell the Allies the true horrors and mass murder that was occurring there, and she believed they could save prisoners' lives. The escape for the pair was planned for Saturday the 24th of June 1944, as the guard force was significantly reduced at the weekend. The plan stated how Galinsky would dress up as an SS guard, and then he would take Mala through the perimeter gate, as if he was taking a prisoner to fix a sink. She would be carrying this, and then the guards would not bat an eyelid. When they managed to get clear, they would get rid of the basin, and they would pretend to be an SS guard and a girlfriend out on a stroll. The couple surprisingly managed to pull off the escape plan, and made it to a town. They hid nearby, and tried to buy bread, However, at some point, a passing patrol of German soldiers became suspicious, and they arrested Malazim at Baum. She knew that she would face execution for the escape, and in an act of true love, 
Galinsky turned himself in too, as he promised Mallor they would not be split up in any way. Together the couple were sent to the horrific punishment cells at Auschwitz, known as Block 11. This was a very feared part of the camp, and they were separated in cells. Galinsky etched his and Mallor's names, and the prisoner numbers they were given onto the walls of his cell, and a guard who was friendly passed notes to each of them. They would communicate via whistling, and allegedly Galinsky would sing classical songs near to Mallor's cell window when he was let outside for exercise. Escaping from Auschwitz, or attempting to do so, was usually met with bloody reprisals. If someone from a barrack was found to have escaped, often many of those inside of the barrack were shot and killed indiscriminately to deter more escapes. Galinsky and Malazim at Baum knew that they were to be executed for their plan as it ultimately failed. As they were caught together, they were executed at the same time. However, things were very different during their execution. They were brought in front of a huge crowd as executions were performed publicly to put off the other prisoners. They were both to be hanged and were brought to the gallows. Galinsky, whilst the verdict of death was being read, dramatically jumped into the noose. However, the guards then pulled him back onto the platform. They wanted him to hear his sentence before he was killed. He shouted to the prisoners from the step, Long live Poland! And as he said his last word, a guard kicked out the stool from underneath him, and he was hanged. The prisoners watching took off their caps to pay their respect to Galinsky, but the guards were furious at this. Whilst this was happening, Zimmerbaum, who had been hiding a razor blade in her hair, took it out, and she slit the veins on the inside of her elbows, attempting to take her own life, rather than have the Nazis do it for her, in one final act of defiance. Bleeding heavily, she spoke to the crowd, saying they would soon be freed. But there are different accounts as to what transpired next. It was said by some that she shouted out and then slapped a guard, saying she was dying a hero, but the Nazi guard would die a dog. Others said she shouted at the prisoners to rise up, inciting a revolution, and she said it was worth dying to try and secure their freedom. It was then claimed when she slapped the guard, he then caught her arm and broke it, and then the SS guards jumped her. She was beaten brutally by a number of guards, who pushed her to the ground, kicked and punched the bleeding Mallor, and then taped her mouth closed. Maria Mandel, a senior female guard, then stated that an order had come straight from Hitler and the Nazi high command, that Mallor Zimmerbaum should be burned alive inside of the camp's crematorium. She was placed on a wheelbarrow after she had been beaten savagely, and some said that she was dead when she was placed onto the barrow. She was taken from the gallows, where she was due to be hanged, to the infirmary, and nurses bandaged her arms very slowly, trying to make her die quickly. She was then taken from the infirmary to the crematorium, and she told those allegedly that she knew she could have survived. It is unclear how she actually died. Some stated how while she was on the cart she bled to death, and others said that a guard, seeing what had happened, decided to put her out of her misery. She was taken into the crematorium to be burned alive. Some claimed that a guard shot her before she was placed into the fire alive, or that she was poisoned. However, the prisoners had been told to make special preparations for Zimmerbaum's death, and with this we can assume that they expected her to be burned alive. The staff in the crematorium cried as they burned her remains, and they then told the prisoners what had happened. The story of Mala Zimmerbaum was incredibly sad, as was that of Galinsky's. They dreamed of escaping the hell on earth that was Auschwitz, and ultimately they both met their end inside of the camp that caused so much suffering. Mala Zimmerbaum was a trusted woman inside of Auschwitz, and she helped others to survive inside of the camp. She ultimately was executed savagely at the hands of the evil guards who inflicted some of the worst war crimes the world has ever seen. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.